Good morning, Interweb. This is follow up to my previous video, Glaciers 2. What happens when glaciers retreat? If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Otherwise, none of this is going to make any sense whatsoever. When a glacier retreats, leaving stones at your feet, that's a moraine. I'm sorry, I can't sing, but that was a great comment. Well played. Hi, it looks like you used the less than sign instead of the greater than sign at 716. Yeah, so I, like an idiot, flipped all the inequality signs in the main video. So thank you for bringing that up. I made a note of it in the corrections document that's linked below each main video. Apologies again, that was really stupid of me. Glacial outbursts on the continental scale can also change the way ocean currents work for a while. Like how it happened on Earth in the North Atlantic, where an outburst at the end of the last ice age caused another mini ice age because it changed the ocean currents so drastically that the climate around the North Atlantic cooled down. So I had no idea about this, thank you for bringing it up, that's another really cool thing you can have occur on your world as a result of glaciation. Or rather, glacier retreat in this case. I want to create a Great Lakes area in one of my worlds, and I know those are created by glaciers, and was hoping how something like that would be covered in the continental glacier bit. How exactly would I place those? So the Great Lakes are simply basins that were carved out by the ice and were exposed once the glacier retreated. So given that, I would expect that any low-lying regions that were covered by a continental glacier, particularly the margins of a continental glacier, will be prime real estate for lakes like the Great Lakes. I'm sure the size of these lakes would depend on the subglacial rock type, as in hard rock, harder to erode, smaller basins, soft rock, easier to erode, larger basins. I wouldn't advocate exhaustively plotting the different types of rock all around your world, so we can basically just hand wave and put those lakes anywhere in those low-lying continental glacier margin regions. You forgot the Urstromtal dude. That's a way to make a river run sideways. So this is another thing I wasn't aware of pre-making this video, Urstromtal, I think that's how it's pronounced. According to Wikipedia, apparently you find these in Europe a lot. And they're basically, they're basically valleys carved out by glacial meltwater. But the thing that makes them fairly unique is that they run parallel to where the front of the ice sheet would have been. So ordinarily you have an ice sheet, it terminates on a flat plane or a downward sloping plane. The meltwater coming from the front of the glacier then will form an outwash plane that emanates perpendicularly out from the front of the ice sheet. But now, if you imagine that ice sheet bet an area of rising land, the glacial meltwaters will only flow perpendicularly from the front of the glacier for a little distance before being blocked and then rerouted parallel to the snout of the glacier. Which is pretty dope, and again, I didn't know about this, so that's awesome. Why didn't you say the name of this place in Iceland? Mainly because I knew I would butcher this horrifically. This is how it should be pronounced. And here's a quick audio recording. All of those rolled oars in quick succession. Yeah, I would not have been able to pull that off. I guess the best I could do would be Skjedar Ar Santor. That's not right. <laughs> I miss the tutorial-like videos on how to make stars, do math, or how to draw a map, use Illustrator. Videos like this one, where you only describe features, don't help me draw or make my maps. At best, I could say, hey, there's a fjord, while pointing at a pixelated blob. So I, I kind of get where you're coming from here, and I'm glad you brought it up, because this is a really good thing to address. And there's a couple of things here to address. Firstly, your fjords point. Fjords would definitely show up on a map. Like you can see them on world maps of Earth and like they will certainly show up on country level maps. Look at a map of Norway, for example. Secondly, these videos aren't really about map making though. They're kind of more about how to build like an environmental narrative. Like if you have a culture and you want to set that culture in a glaciated environment or in a post-glacier environment, and you write, want to write prose from the perspective of your culture, it kind of behooves you to understand the landscape in which they live. If you want to describe the world that your peoples are seeing, you need to know what they're seeing. And building upon that, these landforms, be it glacial or riverine, etc., they can be of cultural importance. I kind of highlighted this a little bit by bringing up the Escarida in Ireland. Yeah, you're never going to see that ridge of glacial till running across Ireland on a map of Ireland. That was, and kind of still is, a region that's elevated from surrounding boglands. Therefore, it's easier to travel on that Esker than the surrounding lands. So the Esker becomes a vital road. Once you have that, you can kind of think about where settlements might pop up along this road. So you can use physical geography to inform your culture building. 
And to give another example from Ireland, specifically from the neck of the woods where I live, I live in a valley. There are mountains on either side of the valley and on one of the mountains there's this giant erratic. Well, giant is probably a bit strong word. There's a large erratic that looks completely out of place on the landscape. Now, obviously something like that, as paradoxical and strange as it is, this giant isolated boulder, will naturally lead people to create stories about how that boulder came to be. And in my area, at least the story I've been told growing up, is that there were two giants, one on each mountain, either side of the valley, and they would fight by hurling boulders at each other. Maybe instead of giants, they're gods. Maybe there's a religious aspect to it. Again, the physical landform can inform how you build your culture. My grandparents used to live in Kawartha and that tunnel valley is called the dragon because it looks like the skeleton of a titanic dragon. That is another IRL example of what I was talking about in addressing the previous question. Physical geography equals cultural stories is kind of the take home of this follow-up video. Anyways, that was that. Thank you so much for watching this video and for watching the main video. And thanks a million for all the comments and questions. Much, much appreciated. Massive thanks also to all the patrons who helped make Art Effects in a possibility. In particular, Lycan, Johan Spadka, Oliver Reed, Spencer Brownlee, Alexander Roper, Andrew Pichy Hale, John Huyer, Rip de Passe, and World Anvil. Until next time, Edgar out.